Good day, bienvenue, bon dia from Washington, D.C., and welcome back for the third week of our program on cyberspace security priorities for Africa's national security actors. My name is Nate Allen, and I am Assistant Professor of Security Studies at the Africa Center. I am the faculty lead, I'm the Africa Center's faculty lead on cyber issues. And just like last week, I will be moderating today's program, where we're going to take a close look at cyber incident management and critical infrastructure protection, looking specifically at both Ghana's and Niger's efforts to protect critical infrastructure from, from cyber related threats. Before we introduce today's program, however, I'd like to take a little bit of time to discuss some takeaways from last week, where we talked about the security sector's role as part of a broader national response to the cyber threats we discussed in the first week. And in terms of a national response, as a reminder, we highlighted the importance of basically four things, um, cybersecurity strategies and policies, legal and legislative frameworks, international cooperation, and then today's session on computer instant response and critical infrastructure protect protection. Um, so three, three main things that really stuck struck out at me both from the plenary last week as well as what we heard in the discussion groups. First, when it comes to thinking about the security sector's role, it's clear that in most African countries at a bare minimum, there is now a police unit that is responsible for responding to cyber crime as more and more crime becomes web enabled or, or cyber enabled. But what really, really stood out to me is beyond that, there is an awful lot of divergence in terms of the roles and responsibilities of the security sector. And even in the most cyber mature countries um, are at a pretty early stage of thinking about what, if any role they see for the military on issues such as critical infrastructure protection or responding to the growth of you know, organized criminal groups who are increasingly exploiting cyber enabled mm -hmm. means to pursue their uh, activities. Um, the second thing that really struck out at me, and, and this was, a, I think, a clear consensus both from the plenary session as well as discussion groups, is that there was an understanding that whatever the security sector's role, there, it needs to be very clearly and specifically defined in legal documents as a matter of both law, policy, and strategy, and it needs to be consistent with the country's constitution and laws. And when, when there's conflicting guidance, when there are conflicting laws, when there are conflicting legal frameworks, when security sector actors are asked by political leaders to do something to do things uh, that might not be strictly legal, there are problems. And we had a really, really concrete example like right last week from uh, Minister Kamara, who, who highlighted very well with respect to Mali, what happens when laws are passed that allow security forces to tamper with uh, personal data in a way that goes against the country, country's constitution, and it contributes to political instability, it diminishes social trust, and, and can destabilize civil military relations in, I think, very uh, unsettling and, and troubling, troubling ways. And what was, what was interesting to hear, I think, was both from so the civilians that are participating, non-government actors that are participating, and, and security sector actors, this wide agreement on the need for clarity and specificity. Um, about the security sector's role as an important way to ensure that they to to ensure that laws are respected and that trust between security forces and the population is created. A final point that was highlighted by Mr. Yadali was the need for African countries to look regionally and continentally when it comes to developing a national cybersecurity response, not just outside of the continent's borders. Um, this is because there are now seven African countries. Ghana, Tanzania, Egypt, Nigeria, Mauritius, Morocco, and Tunisia, who rank in the top 50 of the United Nations Information Technology Union's Cybersecurity Commitment Index. And I'll, I'll note that Kenya is just behind it at 51. So these countries have a lot to learn from one another, and African nations have a lot to learn from various aspects of their experience, which I think Mr. Yadali highlighted very, very well last week. So, that brings me to today's session, which, uh, and which, which I think follows one of the main objectives of our programming, which is to share experiences and lessons learned from across Africa in addressing strategic level cyber threats. And today, today we are deeply honored to have some very experienced and senior policymakers from both Ghana and Niger to hear about their country's efforts to secure cyber dependent critical infrastructure. 
From Ghana, we will hear from one of the country's most cyber mature countries about how they have defined cyber dependent critical infrastructure and developed key laws, policies, and strategies in a national response. And from Niger, which is in the process of finalizing many of its policies, we'll hear about the journey and the process, um, which I think is going to be very, very valuable for countries at a similar stage. And I encourage for other, other countries when they get to discussion groups who are kind of at a similar stage as, as Niger to do exactly what our, what our speaker today is gonna to do in sharing their thoughts, experiences and, and their country's experience. Um, so a reminder, the main objectives of today's session are fourfold. Uh, first of all, to define critical infrastructure and examine the scale and scope of cyberspace related threats and vulnerabilities to critical infrastructure in African countries. Um, second, to discuss the role of national and sectoral level computer security instant response teams, what are called CSERTs, uh, as part of a national cybersecurity response system to identify and respond to cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. Um, third, to discuss the role that national security actors play as member of these CSERTs or other, other mechanisms and institutions like interagency coordination cells or, or that, 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 that um, manage cyberspace security cooperation across a government. And finally, to explore how to best promote cross-sector partnerships between civilian, military, law enforcement, and private sector partners to safeguard internet-dependent critical infrastructure. So with those objectives in mind, it's, it's my delight to introduce both of our panelists. We have uh, Mr. Ken Amalfo, who is the Executive Director of Africa Cybersecurity and Digital Rights Organization. He was formerly the Director of Information Technology and Cybersecurity for the Ghana National Communications Authority, where he, among other things, established the National Cybersecurity Division and the sectoral computer emergency response team within the communications authority. Um, he also co-facilitated the development of Ghana's national cybersecurity policy and strategy and served as cybersecurity lead for the U.S. Ghana Security Governance Initiative. So it's, it's really great to have you back. I'm looking forward to hearing all about your experience and working on these issues over the years. And, and we next we have Colonel Major Ali Mohamedou who since 2017 has served as the chief of the National Security and Defense Policy Program at Niger's National Center for Strategic and Security Studies, CNES. Uh, prior to that, he was for some years the director of information and communication systems at the Nigerian Ministry of National Defense. And he served as a signals and communications officer in the Nigerian military for over 30 years. So again, a, a security sector official with, with deep high level expertise on information technology and security issues um, in Niger. So it's an honor to have both of you with us to help us unpack the experience of each of your respective countries. Um, I'm gonna start with, with you, Ken, but to allow both of you to react to one another and to really compare and, and contrast each country's experience, I'm gonna do some switching back and forth between both of you in contrast to what we've done for the first two weeks. So Ken, our, our first two questions are gonna go to you. And I'd like you to first help our audience because some of us are, are not cybersecurity experts. So help us understand here some of the basic definitions and risks to critical infrastructure from a cybersecurity perspective. Information security analysts often distinguish between, for example, critical infrastructure and critical information infrastructure to describe the ways in which critical infrastructure is vulnerable the cyber risks. So I wanna, where do these distinctions come from and what is the difference between critical infrastructure and critical information infrastructure? And how, do, how does this difference, how do we understand what cyber risks to critical infrastructure are? Maybe expanding on some of what we heard in, in the first week. Ken, uh, over to you. Yes, um, thanks Nate for the opportunity. I mean, thanks to you and, and, and the whole team for hosting this very important um, training, a month-long training session, I think is, is what good recommendation. Um, for, um, I must also um, um, like, to, let me first of all try to define what, um, try to look at cyber risks in general, and, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and then try and then look at the differences between critical infrastructure and critical uh, um, information infrastructure. Um, I'm sure cyber risks you all know that has become a big deal in an era of digitization and technology advancement. 
unlike in the previous one we talked about risks and we don't even mention mention cyber but now cyber has almost taken predominance over other risks because of technology enhancement and because of um, digitization um, cyber attacks against critical infrastructure refers to um, threats vulnerabilities and exploitations and attacks that can be that as you know can disrupt the operation full operation of of, of critical infrastructure and, and in fact cyber attacks can are so critical that they can affect they can bring down a whole electricity you know power generation within a country it can just shut down our water system it can it can bring a failure to military equipment um breach our national security assets and all that so that makes it very very important and very critical for every nation you know to to make sure that they put the the um requisite mechanisms and resilient cyber processes to make sure we deep, we, we mitigate this these actions to date um so there have been several studies that have actually investigated threats to critical infrastructure and then critical information infrastructure um most uh, threats that have been identified include international terrorism include ransomware malware insider threats and even state sponsored uh, terrorism espionage and sabotage you know among among others it's just just a few to mention and in fact most of the high profile uh, example of a cyber attack against critical infrastructure was the uh, susnet computer virus i mean just a virus it was just a worm that targeted the um, iranian nuclear program damaging centrifuges that that could separate the nuclear material I mean, that was able to bring down the whole nuclear operation. So you can imagine how critical cyber risks uh, can, can be. And um, I believe that one of the areas that we usually, or nations usually forget when we talk about cyber risks is about talking about the, the physical risks, physical attacks to our critical um, infrastructure. You know, can you imagine that you have, um, the, your whole uh, critical infrastructure, uh, maybe a telecom infrastructure, the whole critical data center has been shut down. I mean, physically locked up, that you can't even have access to it. You can't even as, have access to the industrial control systems that, that power our water. You can't even have access to, 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 to the facility that hosts um, 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 the computer systems and all that, that power our critical infrastructure. I mean, that alone is more than, you know, having a cyber attack on the system itself to bring it down. So, so, so this is just um, to, to just create awareness of, of, of what cyber risks is. Now, let let me talk about the uh, infrastructure, critical infrastructure, and then critical information infrastructure. Many countries across the globe, and more particularly in the African region, lack the basic understanding of these two technologies. And have been and have not been able to clearly distinguish between critical infrastructure and critical information infrastructure. In fact, countries have have embraced digitization. Countries that have embraced digitization have been able to make a clear cut difference between the, these two, and has also helped them to put together, you know, a resilient process uh, to 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 protect the critical information infrastructure. Most countries are still focusing on critical infrastructure, critical infrastructure, and they don't even think about critical information infrastructure. So they are, they are, they are responsive mechanisms or protective mechanisms does not even cover the systems, the industrial control systems, the computer systems, the networks that actually run this infrastructure, you know, so, so and that is, that is a, a, a danger to that. Um, let me give you a few examples of, of what the ITU defines just for the benefit of our audience. The ITU defines critical infrastructure as the key system, services, functions, whose disruption or destruction would have an adverse impact on public health, safety, commerce, national security, and, and, and a combination of that. Now, the ITF, um, ITEF also always focuses on standards and development, also, also defines critical information um, in fact they have combined both critical information and they have migrated from critical infrastructure to critical information infrastructure 
So they define critical information infrastructure are those systems that are so vital to a nation that their incapability and destruction would have a, an adverse effect on national security, the economy, public health, and safety. So you realize that uh, uh, the objective or the goal for even protecting both the critical infrastructure and, and the critical information infrastructure is to ensure that you know, national security is, is preserved, the economy is preserved, the public health and safety of the citizens are, 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 pre, are protected. You know, but just to cite a few examples ac across the African region, um, Zimbabwe defined critical information infrastructure as computer systems, devices, network computer programs, computer data um, that are vital to the country that an incapacity or destruction of or interference of these systems or assets would have an adverse impact on security, defense, economy, economic, and international affairs, public health, safety, and, 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 and the banking system and, and all that. So you realize that they have gone ahead of just limiting to the IT, just focusing on national security, public health, and, and the citizen safety, and move even to cover the, the, the critical infrastructures as the, 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 the banking sector and, and, and the like. South Africa also defines critical information infrastructure uh, as all ICT systems, data systems, uh, databases, networks, including people, buildings, facilities that process all these um, uh, data systems um, as the funda that are fundamental to the effective operation of the state. So anything that contributes to the effective operation of governance, effective operation of the national security, effective operation of the state is classified as, as, as a critical information in, in infrastructure. But, but in Ghana, for instance, if I should give this side example, in Ghana, when we're drafting our first Ghana national um, cybersecurity policy and strategy in 2014, which I was part of, I was part of the team, we defined critical information infrastructure. At that time, we have migrated you know, from just critical infrastructure to critical information infrastructure. So if you look at all our laws, all our cyber laws, you don't find critical infrastructure, you find critical information infrastructure because of digitization, because of technology enhancement. And, and, and I'll get back to, 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 the, to distinguish the, the two. So, so we define critical information infrastructure as those assets, whether they are real or they are, they are, they are physical or they are virtual, systems and functions that are vital to the nation's uh, state, that any distraction, any interruption, any interference that will have devastating effect on the economy, on economic growth, on the strength of the economy, on, on our national image, on our, uh, our, 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 our national security issues, and public health safety is classified as a, a critical in infrastructure. So, so in summary, I, I will want to distinguish between the two by saying that a critical infrastructure is referred to the national critical infrastructure, those that are beneficial to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the state, such as the water system, the, the electricity system, the public health, um, um, Ghana, in fact, Ghana has included mining as part of it, you know, classify all of them as, and, and some countries even classify public monuments that have been erected as a critical infrastructure, depending on how, how you say it. But, but when you come to critical information infrastructure, then, then we are referring to computer systems, the devices, the networks, the computer programmings, the databases, you know, all this that are included in facilitating running the critical infrastructure. You know, most digitization has, has almost automated all our critical national infrastructures. If you take the, the water system, they run, on, or they run on industrial control systems. If you take the electricity, they run on SCADA systems. All these are computer systems that are powering this, 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 this physical environment. So those are the difference. So all critical infrastructures that have been automated or that are being powered by computer systems, by computer networks, infrastructures are classified as computer, uh, are classified as critical information infrastructure. 
and those that are not powered can be classified as critical infrastructure. So when you talk, when you talk of critical infrastructure, it also includes critical information infrastructure because critical information infrastructure is a subset of critical infrastructure. It's just that there are critical infrastructures that are being powered by by uh, computer systems and and networks. Thank you, Nat. Well, thank you very much, Ken. And I think what your response makes really, really clear is that when we think of cyber dependent critical infrastructure, it's not enough just to look at, think of the sectors. It's you have to really actually identify the vulnerable networks and data on them and realize that they are both vulnerable to cyber attack, but also to physical disablement, right? Like the Stuxnet, for example, worm was introduced through a USB key. So they're both physical and um, virtual vulnerabilities. Um, I'd, I'd actually like to kind of expand a little bit uh, on how Ghana uh, approaches uh, defining and, and protecting its, its, its critical infrastructure, right? Um, you know, if you do, so we've done a little bit of preliminary analysis of this here for some, work, for some, for some research we're working on. And it seems that most African countries that do have an established critical infrastructure protection policy define critical information infrastructure similarly to what you define is really thinking about the systems that are vulnerable and they do it on a sector by sector basis as well and you'll find that I think virtually there's uniform agreement that there are systems in government and military sectors the finance sector telecommunications and as you mentioned at times the water and transport sector that are usually vulnerable but there are often pretty significant differences in approaches beyond that you mentioned for example that Ghana includes the mining sector so I'd like to, to further unpack this how this question of how critical infrastructure might vary to come from country to country, particularly in an African context. So if you could talk a little bit more about what Ghana uh, considers to be cyber dependent critical infrastructure and particularly kind of what sectors are most vulnerable and, and how the process through which Ghana uh, arrived at that definition. Um, yes, thanks. Thanks for that excellent question, um, Nat. So, so Ghana's determination of a, a critical depend, a cyber dependent critical infrastructure is based largely on its digital, digital transformation efforts and the level of automation of its critical infrastructure. Um, um, it, it is important to state that the government and even the vice president launched the Ghana Digital, Ghana, Ghana, Dig, digital Ghana, uh, so to put it. And, and this is an effort to try to automate all the critical um, infrastructures and, and, and move them. So as and when these critical infrastructures are automated, you know, they are shifted and added to the um, critical information infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure. But rapid digitization and, and digital transformation within Ghana has increased the number of cyber dependent critical infrastructures and, and the list keeps adding as, as Ghana's agenda you know, progresses. And I might say that in both our national cyber security policy and strategy and the National Cyber Security Act, which was uh, 2020, we just passed you know, last year, which, which serves as a legal basis to, 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 to back the protection of our critical um, infrastructure, our critical information infrastructure. There is a laid down mechanism or framework for determination of all this, this uh, critical infrastructure. First of all, there is the establishment of a, a, a national, a national uh, technical working computer, cybersecurity technical working group. And this comprises of all relevant representatives from all the relevant stakeholders, critical cyber dependent, critical information infrastructure sectors. Uh, including the private sector, the telecom sector, the banking sector, and government, relevant government agencies, even the national security included. So all this team sat down and they made a determination on which infrastructures we think falls within that category of, of, of being a critical information infrastructure. Now this team identified um, the national security, national defense and security. They identified the banking and finance sector the information and communication sector, the telecom sector, the energy sector, transportation sector, water sector, sector health sector, government sector, energy and, and emergency responses. And even food and agriculture was part of it. And, and then one of the amazing aspects that we don't see other countries including in their list 
is the public key infrastructure, which has now also been included because we see the public key infrastructure as a critical national asset or critical national infrastructure. And, and it, it may interest you not to believe, to, to, to know that the mining sector has also been added now. Now we have drones that are, you know, powering, you know, the mining sector and running. So mining has now been a critical um, um, focus area for government and for national security. And that has also been, been, been added to, to the list. So uh, besides this, the Cyber Security Act 2020 also clearly gives the Minister of Communications, who is the sector minister that, that, that oversees this whole cyber security effort, um, um, the, the, the powers to also identify as and when, you know, today this is add new sectors or new infrastructures to the critical information infrastructure as and when he deems fit, you know, by the advice of the cybersecurity authority, which is currently the National Cybersecurity Center. But out of the law, it's going to be, you know, metamorphosed into an authority. So they, they have that, he has that honors as and when and when by the advice of the committee to add to the list of the critical national infrastructures. And I must say that the critical national infrastructure as it stands now is something that has been gazetted in a public. That means it has become it has become law. So no one can just get up and just add on to it. You have to follow the due process to, to, to do that. Yeah, so, so thank you. I, I hope I've answered. Uh, yeah, no, thank you very much. Very comprehensively. I think, you know, the, the adding of public key infrastructure, which helps protect personal data through encryption and then thinking about um, major vulnerable economic sectors is a really interesting and important uh, insight, you know, as well as having a, a responsibility the communications authority to potentially designate additional critical infrastructure as needed. It strikes me as a pretty flexible approach to ensuring that as Ghana digitizes that, that um, they're adequately defining critical infrastructure so that then it can be afforded and necessary protections. Um, so now I'm gonna move on to uh, Colonel Major Mohamedou um, with a similar question. So we can kind of compare insights. I mean, I'll, I'll note that, that first of all, many of Niger's cyber policies with respect to cyber dependent critical infrastructure are in the process of being formulated, but, but that's okay. As I said earlier, there's a lot to learn from the process um, here and, and I think I think we can important to compare experiences of countries at different levels of uh, cyber maturity. So, Colonel Major Mohamedou, what what do you consider your country's cyber dependent critical infrastructure? Because I know this is a policy process that's in, in, in the process of being made, and, and I understand that that there's a, a, a process in place to identify this critical infrastructure. So, I'd like you to talk about the process uh, as well. Uh, welcome, Colonel uh, Major Mohamedou. The floor is yours. And the question is, what do you consider to be your country's cyber dependent critical infrastructure and what are the policy processes that are in place to begin to protect it? Thank you so much to the Africa Center for this opportunity to present uh, the cybersecurity situation in Niger. Regarding your question, Niger does not officially have a list of critical infrastructures. We are still in the process of developing our cybersecurity strategy. Nevertheless, we have been able to identify uh, by using the regional strategy of cyber security and cyber criminality of ECOWAS, we have identified some sectors that fall within critical infrastructures. We have the sector of, uh, of def everything related to defense and national security. There is the te telecommunications sector, transportation, energy sector, financial sector, and all of these uh, sectors have critical infrastructures. For example, we have water, the water sector, the, the, the banking sector, and this is how we have taken a look at these infrastructures while we are putting into place a cybersecurity strategy for Niger. In terms of protections, mechanisms of protections, we are 
seeking to put into place uh, teams that can respond to all the cyber incidents. We have inter the information national information system that is responsible for the protection of the cyberspace in Niger. And it responds to all of the incidents that are related to cyberspace for the state. So this national sy sy information system responds to incidents. I can speak of, of certain two incidents. First of all, we had a cyber attack on the government website. And after this attack, this national agency took steps to respond to these attacks. First off, they recommended that software be used to uh, better protect the website. Then there were uh, security certificates for the website put in place. And this is how this agency was able to respond to the attack against the government website. There was another incident. There was actually um, a fire um, in the server center. And so after this, the server was destroyed. And after this, they were able to Thanks to the backup of the system, we were able to recuperate all the data. But after this, the agency uh, put in place um, a, a group, uh, a chief information security officer who is responsible to respond to all cybersecurity events. We don't have in Niger uh, yet uh, really a system for to respond to all the incidents. But we, for example, banks have their, have their um, system to respond to attacks. Within each structure and domain, there are uh, mechanisms put into place to to respond or deflect cyber attacks and this is uh the situation in niger regarding cyber security on critical infrastructure thank you thank you very much uh colonel major hamadou i think you know one of your what your remarks make clear first of all is the importance potentially of, of regional cooperation right how regional actors can draw on, you know, regional bodies like ECOWAS or the AU as we're in the process of developing uh, uh, legal frameworks, legislative frameworks and policies to protect critical infrastructure, to help them identify critical infrastructure in the meantime, as well as how, you know, it's important, I think, to um, iteratively build and adapt institutions. You mentioned this sort of uh, Nigeria, this uh, Nigerian uh, agency responsible for IT, um, and, and protecting uh, government systems from attack and how it responded to two attacks. And my understanding is, is that it will play a pretty key role in the further development of uh, institutions to, uh, to protect critical infrastructure from attack in Niger. You also raised the question of how to respond to critical infrastructure attacks in specific sectors. And I think here, one of the big questions is, what the balance of roles and responsibilities should be between the public and, and the private sector. So I'd, I'd like to get into that question a little bit and to talk a little bit more precisely about um, what the key elements are of a national critical infrastructure response in, in, that are in place in Niger or what, what some of the plans are and, and kind of what in your view as somebody who's worked on these issues for quite a while, what more needs to be done? What, what, what are the lessons learned? So, so what in your view um, should, is, do you think Niger is gonna be doing in the coming years or should be done in the coming years to better secure the country's critical infrastructure? And what are some of the lessons learned from uh, the processes that have already been initiated? We are following uh, the uh, guidelines of ECOWAS, the fight against cybercrime and 
in terms of policies, regional policies to protect critical infrastructure. We have a national committee that is um, is now going to develop a national cybersecurity strategy, and it will take into account all of the guidelines of the region. And as I told you, the National Agency for Cybersecurity is seeking to put into place the guidelines and for the protection of the different government agencies. So we are in terms of putting into place some C certs, and also we are focusing on telecommunications and how to put together a C cert and how to um, make everyone more aware of these stakes. We also have a national security strategy who that will take a look at the fight against cyber attacks and to, to ensure the security of the country. And so this is what we are working with. And I think that by 2022, as recommended by ECOWAS, we will have a national security, a national cybersecurity strategy in place to fight against these threats. And this is what I can tell you for the moment. No, thank you very, very much. So, so two things. You you mentioned first of all that that Niger was in the process of setting up a computer security incident response team at CSERT, which is a group of technical specialists with multidisciplinary expertise, um, usually from different sectors that are responsible both to respond to and particularly to recover from cyber attacks. One of the most important aspects of responding to a cyber attack isn't just preventing them from happening, but also recovery. Maybe recovery you mentioned, for example, having backups of computer networks in, in the case of a, of a fire on a server, that, that's really, really, really important. That's a best practice. Um, most African countries are in the process of establishing some kind of national level C-cert, which I imagine in Niger's case is probably gonna be located with the national uh, cybersecurity agency, um, and it's recommended that eventually uh, C certs be established sector by sector as well to kind of iteratively build and adapt and ensure that there's protection as kind of a country uh, develops into cyber maturity. You, you also mentioned um, the you know the important role that I think ECOWAS is playing that I think is important to highlight as sort of a catalyst for national strategies and, and policies. And I think what's one thing that's coming out at me is how, how all the different elements of a national response, um, legislation, strategy, and policy, um, and, and, and these institutions are somewhat interrelated. Like you can't necessarily have an agreement on um, what critical infrastructure is without some kind of policy in place. I think that's a really, really important uh, point from that, that you've, you've highlighted in your remarks. Um, let's let's go back to you, Ken, to the to the same series of questions. I think we've heard a really excellent overview from Colonel Ali Mamadou about what some of the major, major ongoing efforts are in Niger to protect its critical national infrastructure from cyber attack, and we have some idea how that's going to develop uh, with being catalyzed by regional efforts in the coming years. And I'd like to know how Niger's response compares with that of Ghana. What what kinds of mechanisms? like computer emergency response teams or interagency coordination cells, does Ghana have in place to protect cyber dependent critical infrastructure? Yeah, thanks, Nate. Um, Ghana has a, a, well, a very comprehensive uh, mechanism for um, national computer emergency response and interagency coordination. And this is well, defined and clearly defined in our national cyber security policy and strategy document, um, which is approved by, 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 by the cabinet. And, and it's also captured in our new uh, cyber security act, which is the law, you know, backing um, our cyber security initiative within the country. Um, I must also say that in all our policy development and um, the mechanism for the computer emergencies, 
we try to follow the guidelines uh, of the ITU, the guidelines of the African Union and ECOWA. So we, we don't just, we are not just independent of, yeah, you would say we use all those guidelines to, to help us, you know, but of course, uh, there might be certain country specific initiatives that, you know, one will have to take. Yeah. So, so, so Ghana has established as part of its framework is as established a national cybersecurity center that have an overriding or oversight, general oversight over the computer emergency response uh, initiatives and then interagency coordinations, both internal and then external, that's international corporations and all that. So they serve as the, as the focal point. And, and this, this National Cybersecurity Center was defined, was, was, was established based on our national cybersecurity policy. In fact, the new act uh, mandates that this is, you know, metamorphosed or, you know, pushed to be an authority. And, and that should happen very, very soon. Yeah. So the center is primarily responsible for all Ghana's cybersecurity developments, including uh, cybersecurity incident response coordinations within government and, 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 and among the private sector, as well as the protection of our national critical information infrastructure. Now, above this is the establishment of a national uh, cybersecurity technical working group, which I mentioned earlier on. This technical working group uh, are responsible for the technical implementation of this whole uh, uh, strategy that we have, including the response mechanism, emergency response mechanisms, and the protection of, of so. So this team comprises of representatives from all the critical information um, uh, infrastructure sectors or, or, or eight stakeholders. So they comprise all of them, including the private sector, even the, the civil society organizations are represented in there to ensure that you know the rights, human rights of the citizens are not infringed. So, so this is the team that actually are responsible for overseeing the technical implementation in terms of me uh, mechanism response, mecha emergency response mechanisms and the protection of this. Far above this is the establishment of an interministerial steering committee. This is not you know, uh, done in many countries, but we have that, why? Because the government, the president sees this, this as a very, uh, uh, in fact, it's top on its priority initiative that is, is, is important that all the relevant sector ministers come together to provide you know, policy directive and support to this technical working group in terms of um, maybe issuing some tax and policies like tax incentives for the private sector to be able to you know, provide enough uh, protective mechanisms and, and all that. And the president actually chairs this, this, this interministerial committee and that 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 puts uh, that how important cyber security is to government. And um, so beyond this, we have the national set that we all know. So the national set is under the cyber security center, and and they are responsible for the national coordination of all these national um, emergency response technologies. And then we have sectorial sets. So the law, the mandate that all the sectors, critical information uh, infrastructure sectors also set up their sectorial sets. All the sets report you know, to, 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 the, to the national set as the coordinating center, and then we can have you know, international collaborations on all that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so this, uh, this sectorial sets are there. So the telecom sector has a sectorial set that is already established and the law, you know, following the mechanisms, outline mechanisms, and it's operational. The national security have its sectorial sect that is operational. We have the banking and financial sector that also has its uh, sectorial set that is functional, and other sectorial sects are also coming up. In fact, all the, even the academia and, and all the others are also going to, are supposed to have their sectorial sects. Uh, so currently we have a very effective mechanism, the national cyber, National Computer Emergency Response is the coordinating factor that is responsible for the providing emergency response to all cyber attacks and also responsible to for have an oversight of the protection of our critical information infrastructures. And each sector has the responsibility 
of providing the responsive and protective mechanism for their infrastructure, critical information infrastructure. So let me leave it off here and, and I'm, I'm sure as we proceed, I will throw more light into this area. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Ken. I think you've laid out a lot of good practices on the table for, for us all in terms of both having you know, a national lead agency, the National Communication, Cyber Communication Center that has uh, the national cert and it's responsible for setting up sectoral certs, as well as, you know, understanding that in order to, to adequately address the threats to critical infrastructure, there needs to be both policy level coordination at the ministerial level led by the president that you mentioned, as well as this technical working group that you mentioned. So I think a lot of good, good practices there that I think other African countries can learn from. Frankly, other countries can learn from because I don't think a lot of other countries across the world necessarily have a similarly kind of robust uh, policymaking uh, architecture. Um, so I, I, you also kind of raised the question and, and mentioned that these, these efforts are multi-stakeholder, multi-governmental. So, you know, the major objective of this course, of, of course, is to take stock of cybersecurity priorities for national security actors. So as a final question to both of you, and if you can maybe take about five minutes each, I'd like to hear what you think the role for security sector actors should be in protecting cyber dependent critical infrastructure. Um, so Ken, for you, what, what does the role, what does the security sector play or what kind of role does the security sector have in Ghana as part of broader government efforts to protect cyber dependent critical infrastructure? And, and more broadly, what, do you, what role do you think the security sector should play either in Ghana or, or Africa uh, more broadly? What are some, some lessons and insights? Um, yes, thanks, Not again. Yeah, so I think the security sector, and, and if I may put all of them under the national security, which they've got the national security, the coordinating center for all the security sectors, has an overriding responsibility for the security and safety of Ghana's critical information infrastructure and the well-being of the citizens as well. In fact, they were responsible for protecting, you know, our critical infrastructure even before you know, the advent of technological advancement that we have to move to the critical information infrastructure. So they play, they still play a key role in the oversight and they have oversight responsibility by law to protect all this, ensure that, you know, all this infrastructure, both the physical assets and then the human beings as well, the citizens really are protected and they are safe. So they, they, they have that, uh, that uh, and I must state here that our national security, the security said that, is also a stakeholder. Uh, in fact, they are, they are part of the National um, um, Cybersecurity Technical Working Group. They play a role that they have a representative in there. They also have a represent a seat at the Interministerial uh, Steering and Cybersecurity Steering Committee. They also have a seat. So, so they play a role. They contribute both from the policy level to the technical level and then onto the sectorial level. In fact, they are also a, a stakeholder when it comes to critical infrastructure because they also runs a national uh, security infrastructure, national security system, national security co communication systems, national security CCTVs that are monitoring, you know, the whole country of, you know, threats and ever. So they play a role, a very critical role in this sector. So they are not different from, from any of the other sectors. They play a role. They have also established their sectorial sect and, and that governs, you know, they coordinate all cybersecurity initiatives within the security sector. So they play a very key role in, 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 in um, protection of our, our critical information infrastructure in Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ken. Uh, so same question to you, Colonel Major Mamadou. We'll conclude with you to give your take as a security sector official to compliment Ken's experience from his chair as a civilian. Um, what role does the security sector play as part of broader governmental efforts to protect critical infrastructure from cyber-related threats in Niger? And you know, more broadly, what role do you think the security sector should play uh, going forward across the continent as the continent continues to digitize in protecting critical national infrastructure? In terms of this question, I would say, just like Ken, that in Niger, it is the National Security Council that actually creates sort of a federation of all initiatives, brings them together, manages all national security issues. 
So to do this, it has certain uh, information systems, intelligence systems, because it's, intelligence is very important in the realm of cybersecurity in order to prevent attacks and potentially to detect uh, certain criminal actors to find out about their existence. So we have a, a department on government security that takes care of intelligence regarding cyber criminals. In terms of national defense, within the armed forces, we have a transmissions division. Um, this division is the uh, ICT operator for the army and also for national defense. They play a monitoring role for crisis, but their primary role is prevention. Um, through communications, through raising awareness. So these representatives of the security forces uh, use cyberspace tools to accomplish this mission. So there is also, they have the, the capacity of conducting an audit of all cyber systems that depend uh, that, that are under the supervision of the army and, and take part in national security. Now they also deal with the physical infrastructure aspect because there is the physical infrastructure aspect and then there's a cyber security aspect and they must be brought together. Now, in terms of internal security, we have a national internal security strategy that was adopted in 2017. And at this, we had already had um, seen some cyber attacks. So the, the recommendation within this strategy is to establish a national plan to ensure cyber defense. So all the security forces currently are exchanging information, even though we don't have a specific CSERT that is dedicated to defense and to security, we are still able to share information. And we also have a police division, a national police division that takes care of cybercrime and that fights against anything that is considered cybercrime and that plays a role during cyber attacks. When there is a cyber attack against, where, when there is an attack against a critical infrastructure, there's first an assessment that is carried out by a technical team. After that, once uh, suspects or individuals or, or group is identified, then this investigation is passed on to the national police and they have this cyber crime department that will take care of that. So here's what I can say about our fight against cyber crime and protecting no. essential infrastructures. No, thank you very much. I think both of you do an excellent job in pointing out the, the uh, ways in which it's essential that security sector actors be involved in critical infrastructure protection. And Colonel Major Mamadi, you highlighted both of it. Obviously, it is the military's responsibility to secure its own networks and communication systems, and probably to have better resources and, and technical expertise to be able to do that than you might find in, in other uh, places in government, just because um, what goes on there is, is, is relatively uh, sensitive. And you also highlighted, I think, too, when it comes to thinking about a broader national response, it is essentially the, the police's duty, right, to identify uh, and investigate, um, you know, crimes that are committed that are that are attacks on critical infrastructure. Um, I think where the debate gets a little bit more ambiguous and, and across both in Africa and across the rest of the world is kind of what kind of things the security sector should be doing to protect Things that are that are more often seen as the private sector responsibilities. You see banks, finance, uh, you know, telecommunications to some extent. Who you know, we we talked a little bit about this in the opening session. Have an awful lot of internal capabilities to prevent and identify cyber attacks. And it's a question I think of providing them potentially with the right incentives, so that the security sector might not have to you know intervene or conduct a, a critical criminal investigation. 